The British Empire was the nation on which the sun never set. By the 1890s, Britain had colonies stretching from the frozen wastes of the Arctic to the vast deserts of Australia. However, some of the empire's most prolific holdings were those on the continent of Africa. After the Berlin Conference, Britain held African territory expanding from the Nile and Egypt in the north to South Africa's Cape of Good Hope. In order to control these newly acquired territories, railroads would be commissioned throughout the continent. One of these such railroads would be commissioned expanding from the Swahili port city of Mombasa to the interior regions of Uganda and the shores of Lake Victoria. The railroad would face a near-complete stop at the Savo River due to circumstances that would never have been expected. The events portrayed are documented in the 1908 autobiographical account The Man-Eaters of Savo and Other East African Adventures by British Lieutenant Colonel John Henry Patterson. The empire had overextended itself into eastern Africa and was trying to enforce their claims by building railways connecting the coastline to the mysterious and vast interior. Patterson wrote on the subject, The railway, which has modernized the aspect of the place and brought civilization in its train, was then only in the process of construction, and the country through which it was being built was still in its primitive, savage state. The British believed the railroad would civilize the country and make it priority in the region, bringing many workers from India to expedite the process. The rail line reached the banks of the Savo River in spring of 1898, around the time Patterson was designated foreman. However, Patterson arrived in the camp to find it in disarray due to the disappearance of workers in the night which he initially believed was due to foul play. However, soon Patterson learned the truth. Two lions, fully grown males with no manes and fur and a lighter color than ordinary lions, had been dragging these workers off in the night. While initially the lions only achieved sporadic success in their hunts, Patterson wrote their methods then became so uncanny and their man-stalking so well-timed and so certain of success that the workmen firmly believed they were not real animals at all, but devils in lion shapes. Over the course of nine months, from April to December of 1898, Patterson would be caught in a deadly game of cat and mouse as he attempted to hunt the lions, only to find he was the one being hunted. The workers built a boma, a traditional thorn fence to keep lions out, but the man-eaters simply broke through. The field hospital had to be moved several times due to the constant attacks on patients and staff, and the lion attacks became common. Despite the attacks, construction continued, and the Indian workers began having problems with Patterson. Due to Patterson's work ethic and low pay, talks of mutiny began to take place in secret, and a plot to murder Patterson and blame it on the lions began amongst the masons working on the bridge. This was partly due to Patterson's mistreatment of the workers, at one point shooting over the workers' heads to make them go back to work, and even lighting a fire under the cot of a sleeping worker. Patterson learned of the plot from another worker, but decided to see it through. When confronted in a quarry by the Masons, Patterson wrote, I told them I knew of their plot to murder me, and that they could certainly do as they wished, but that if they did, many of them would assuredly be hanged for it, as the government would soon find out the truth and would disbelieve their story that I had been carried off by a lion. Talks of mutiny did not end with that event, however, and the provisional government ended up sending soldiers to maintain order. The workers were growing discontent to due to the working conditions being far too tenuous for the meager pay they were receiving, and the harassment by lions was not helping. The lions grew bold later into their killing spree, and at one point dragged a worker through the boma only to devour him 30 yards away from the camp, and did not flee at the guns fired in their direction. Patterson designed a cage to trap the lions inside, but it proved ineffective. 
Patterson attempted to hunt the lions night after night to no avail, with the lions attacking on the other side of the camp from where he was. The attacks came to a head in the beginning of December, when construction on the railroad ground to a halt. Patterson wrote, The workers flocked to my boma in a body, and stated that they would not remain at Savo any longer for anything or anybody. They had come from India on an agreement to work for the government, not to supply food for either lions or devils. Soon after the Indian workers began fleeing en masse, those who stayed attempted to make their domiciles lion-proof by fortifying their tents or building on top of water towers. The night of December 9th would see Patterson finally felling the first of the beast in a grueling hunt that would see Patterson being the one truly hunted. Patterson made the shot just as the lion was about to pounce on him, and it died in the position of a lion about to jump. The second lion died a few days later, and would put up a fight and nearly kill Patterson by charging at him. Patterson only survived by shooting its leg and climbing a tree. The lions were both over nine feet long, and with their deaths, the attack ceased. The bridge over the Savo River was finally completed in February of 1899. It is unknown exactly how many people the Savo man-eaters killed. While Patterson states 135 died in his book, the official company records downplayed the event, stating only 29 lost their lives. It is also unknown how the Savo lions developed such a taste for human flesh, with one predominant theory being that one had a chipped tooth that made it harder for them to hunt traditional prey, and another states that the region was on an old slave trade route, and the lions may have subsisted on dead or dying slaves as cubs. However, the encroachment of a British railroad company with foreign workers and little security on these lions' territory would certainly set the stage perfectly for a real-life horror story. As for John Patterson, he continued his service for the British military, serving in the Second Boer War and the First World War. Patterson became a major Zionist advocate later in his life dying in his sleep in Bel Air, California in 1947. Honoring his final request, Patterson and his wife were exhumed and reinterred in Avohayo Cemetery in Israel. As for the lions, Patterson sold their skins to the Chicago Museum of Natural History in 1926, where they were stuffed and are on display today. While Patterson's story is an imperialistic story of a white savior come to a colonized region and defeating the monsters of the past while helping bring quote-unquote civilization with his imperialist attitude showing throughout the book. The lion story is that of an empire extending to a region it had no business being in and facing the consequences in the form of two demonic lions.